What is going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. I know it's been a little bit. I just got back from Drift Week where me and Adam LZ drove from Austin, Texas to LA, driving through four states, seven tracks, all in his JZX100. It was an absolute blast. If you guys haven't seen that footage, definitely go to Adam's channel and check it out. I was there for the entire event to film and edit everything, and it was an absolute blast. But I am back home finally, and I have something new to share with you guys. If you can already tell from the title of this video, I got a new car. I'm sitting in it right now, and I just got it registered today, and I've been absolutely loving it so far. It's a blast to drive, and it's just a fun little car to have as a daily driver. So, hope you guys are stoked on this video, and I hope you enjoy. What's up, everyone, and welcome back to my channel. Now, if you guys remember, back about a month, month and a half ago, I got into an accident with my old daily driver, which was a 2013 Volkswagen Jetta TDI Sport Wagon and that car had some problems and it never really performed as I wanted it to just because uh, the dealership that I bought it from was not truthful of the problems that the car had and ultimately when the car got totaled I wasn't really that sad about it but one thing that I learned from owning that Volkswagen was that I loved the way that they felt and I loved the way that they drove that's where this comes in this is a 2008 Audi A3 3.2 liter. Now I'm doing this review kind of Hoovy's Garage style just because I love watching Hoovy and it seems to be the best way to kind of go over everything that I know about this car so far from me owning it for a day. <laughs> now I actually bought this car two days before I left for the trip to Texas for Drift Week. So as soon as I bought this car, I didn't really get a chance to drive it as much because I left. I just got back yesterday and this car is freshly registered and I've been driving it ever since this morning and I gotta say, I absolutely love this thing. Now I'm not gonna sit here and act like I know everything about this car because I absolutely do not, but I do know kind of enough to go over everything that you should know about this car and why it's so cool and the fact that I got one. Now these cars came in three different variants. There was the Audi A3 with the 2.0 liter turbo, there was the Audi A3 that came with the diesel engine, and then there was the Audi A3 that came with the 3.2 liter VR6 engine out of the Mark V Golf R32. Now that's what makes this car so special. This car with the 3.2 liter engine was not as common as the 2.0 TFSI engine that most of these A3s came with. The main reason why I got this car was because the 3.2 liter VR6 one, comes with 250 base horsepower, and two, the maintenance on this car was actually done very well. And despite its higher mileage of 159,000 miles, it's had two timing services, and everything has been maintained very well in this car. Now, I don't know too much about this package. I'm very new into the whole European Audi community, but this car does have the S-Line package. I'm not sure if that comes with just the 3.2 liter engine or if it's a performance package that offers different things, but this car does have some cool features to it that I will be going over and we will be doing a little driving segment as well. Let me know what you guys think about this video. I've never done a review like this before and when I bought the Jetta wagon, I kind of just went to the dealership, bought the car, walked around it a little bit, showed things here and there, and that was it. But with this video, I wanted it to be kind of different. So starting on the front end of this car, you have the signature Audi grill with the little S-line badge here, letting people know that this is the higher up model than the normal base model. And you'll also notice that the headlights are projector headlights, but they're also auto leveling and auto adjusting, which is very cool for when you're taking corners and off ramps on highways because the headlights will follow the turn as you go, which for cars nowadays in 2020, that's a pretty common feature. But in 2008, that was kind of epic. Now you'll also notice as I stand next to the car, me being five foot nine, this car's not big. It's not small, but it's not big. It's kind of in between from a hatchback and a full wagon. They called this model the Audi A3 Sportback 
because it kind of falls in between the hatchback and wagon. But I think for what I do as a filmer and a freelancer, this is kind of the perfect little package for a car because I get a lot of space and I also get versatility for it being all-wheel drive, a little bit faster, not crazy fast, but fast enough and just a fun car. Now the back of the car is not really all that impressive. If you look close enough, you can kind of notice some characteristics between this car and the Golf R32, but not much. The Mark V Golf R32 has a dual center exit exhaust, whereas this car, its exhaust is on the left. Now in terms of newer Audis, where they have gigantic Audi badges letting people know that it's an Audi, the Audi badge on this is fairly small, along with the fairly small 3.2 liter Quattro. And yes, this car is Quattro all-wheel drive, although in the earlier generations like this year, some people refer to the all-wheel drive system as Haldex, which yes, it is a Haldex system if I remember correctly, but on this car it does say Quattro. Now, looking at the inside of this car, it is pretty basic, but it does have a lot of sporty features to it. Now, the first thing that you'll notice is the steering wheel. The steering wheel is pretty sporty, doesn't have a lot of features on it, it has volume up, down, it has different mode settings, and then obviously your big airbag with your Audi logo on it. But then you'll also notice that it has paddle shifters on it, and that is because this car comes with a DSG dual clutch automatic transmission, which shifts very smoothly and fairly quickly for it being a 2008. I have driven other cars where the dual clutch, you know, paddle shifters uh, do shift a lot quicker and are a lot more responsive. Whereas this car, it's pretty responsive. I wouldn't say that it's like exotic sports car responsive, but it still is a lot of fun. So with this being the first review that I've ever really done on a car, especially a car that I've owned, um, I'm trying to be as informative as I can at the same time as kind of keeping things short and simple. Um, so yeah, definitely let me know what you guys think of this type of video, but moving on, the rest of the front seat section of this car. Very nice, it has bucket seats for the front that are in nice leather as well as the back seats are obviously in leather as well. Cup holders are actually decently sized. My coffee fits in here no problem, which is an A plus for me for cup holders. Now when you move on to the Audi Symphony radio system, uh, for 2008, it was probably uh, really nice, but for 2020, it's pretty dated and it's in the kind of analog uh, red old Audi style of screens and it's not the best. Definitely works for what I need it to and I can change stations and everything like that even though I'm solely someone that listens to music on their phone so I just use Bluetooth either way. This car does not come with Bluetooth but you get adapters so on and so forth. Anyways, the sound system in this car is actually phenomenal. It comes with the Bose sound system along with the Audi Symphony and I've messed around with the EQ settings already today and this thing bumps. It's great sound system, especially for a factory car. I know a lot of times factory sound systems can be garbage and this one definitely uh, gets an A plus from me. It sounds awesome. Under the hood now. I apologize as well if the wind is interfering with this video. I tried to find a nice scenic place to make this video and uh, it just so happens to be an open field. So anyways, engine bay. Here is the iconic legendary VR6 3.2. So I think one of the reasons why this engine is so iconic is because they were able to fit a V6 engine in the engine space of where a four cylinder should be able to fit. This engine's really small, but it's a V6, which I think is crazy. And it also makes really, really unique and only to the VR6 exhaust notes. It sounds like uh, Chewbacca being beaten with a trumpet, um, and it's great. And there will be videos on that soon. We will be opening the exhaust up on this car uh, because it's a VR6 and I have to do that. Okay, moving on. Another thing that you'll notice is the S-Line badges on the rear passenger doors, as well as on each door molding on the bottom. You'll see down here, it says S-Line. It also has that on the front. And that moves us on into the back seat. Now, the back seats are fairly plain. There's not anything crazy about the back seats. The legroom is there. It's not a lot of leg room, 
but for a smaller car kind of like this it's not bad and uh, it's definitely doable now between the two back seats there is a little cubby here for what looks to be an ashtray but if anyone smokes in this car I'm kicking them out now there also is a center drop-down section here that has a compartment for storing things as well as cup holders and if you guys know me I drink Duncan's coffee every single day because I'm from Massachusetts and that's all we have and no I don't drink Starbucks even though Adam has forced me to drink Starbucks for the past two weeks it's good but I still like Duncan now the trunk space in this car is not a lot but I am able to fit most of my camera gear in here no problem and we'll be able to fit many many other things in here as well so it is pretty versatile and i do like the little privacy window that it has here uh, to kind of not show what's in here because this stuff is expensive and i don't want people to see what i have okay i think it's time we start this thing up engine still is fully stock obviously i just bought it two weeks ago so you should still be able to hear at least a little bit of uh chewbacca trumpet <laughs> I don't know if I have a rattly exhaust or if that's just Chewbacca trumpet, but it sounds cool either way. So now let's take this bad girl out on the road and see how it drives. All right, well, aside from that being a terrible launch, yes, this car has launch control, which I think is super cool. Um, Let's get it out on the road and see how it is. I mean, I've been driving this car all day and uh, I got it registered at like nine this morning and it's almost three o'clock. So I've been driving it for a solid five hours today and uh, all I can say is this car is awesome. So this is a six speed DSG uh, dual clutch automatic transmission. So it does upshift pretty quickly when you're in drive. It just wants to get to the highest gear possible for fuel economy. Um, but with the paddle shifters, even in drive, you're able to downshift and uh, get a little higher in the revs. It's not crazy fast. It's not crazy fast, but 250 horsepower is nothing to sneeze at. If you guys are new to the channel, then you won't know about it, but for those of you that are frequent flyers of the channel, uh, my Toyota Soarer makes 245 right now. So this car makes the same and feels right around the same. The only difference is that this car's NA has no turbos, so the throttle response is right there, and it feels awesome. Because of the Audi all-wheel drive, the Audi Quattro all-wheel drive, uh, it takes corners great. Um, I haven't had any issues with this car uh, in terms of snow. I only drove it through the snow a little bit, like a very, very tiny bit before I went on my trip. So I didn't really get to experience, uh, you know, Audi's signature all-wheel drive system plowing through snow like it's no problem. Uh, but it's only February and I'm in Massachusetts. So I know for a fact we're gonna get more, <coughs> more snow. And I'm looking forward to it because now I got a car that can handle it and not have a problem at all. So I'm coming up to a stop sign right now and up to a straightaway. So I'm in drive right now. I'm gonna drop it down into sport and we're gonna see how it feels. Dropping it into sport. So these paddle shifters are really nice. Boom, 65. Not any crazy record beating numbers or anything like that, but definitely quick for what it is. And uh, for the price that you can get this car for, uh, I don't think you can beat it. I got this car for $4,900 and you get all this. I think that's sick. I looked at three Mark V R32 Golfs before I looked at this car. Um, 
and they all drove the same, they all felt the same, but this car just has kind of that Audi feel to it, so I almost want to refer to this car as a luxury Golf R32. And this car, believe it or not, actually fits my needs a little better, uh, just because of the work that I do with filming and everything like that. I do plan on getting a rig made for the back of this car so that I can mount my camera gear to the back of the car. And I wouldn't have been able to do that if I got a Golf R32 because of the center exit exhaust. I need to be able to mount a tow hitch on the back of the car and it wouldn't have worked uh, with the R32. But here we go, we got the opening. I mean, for a car with 159,000 miles on it, it shifts great. And I know you're supposed to do DSG services on these transmissions uh, very frequently. I think it's every 40 or 50,000 miles, something like that. Uh, but it shifts very smooth and it's quick. Uh, I will say the downshifts are quicker than the upshifts for the paddle shifters. Uh, but either way, for 4,900 bucks, you can't beat this. It's so much fun to drive. And I know all you manual car guys out there are freaking out, oh my God, Mike got another automatic car. This car didn't come in manual with the VR6 engine, at least for this generation. I know the Mark IV Golfs uh, came with manuals, but Mark V's did not. This car is kind of built off of the platform of the Mark V, so this car does not have it. And honestly, I don't mind at all. With the paddle shifters being this responsive and this much fun to drive, for this being a daily driver, I have no complaints. So I think that this kind of brings an end to this review. Let me know what you guys think of it down in the comments. I've never done reviews before, and if you guys enjoyed it, I have no problem doing more reviews in the future. Um, it was definitely kind of a different style video to make, and I'm not too used to it, but it was also fun at the same time. So that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this little review on my new daily driver. Um, we will be doing modifications to this car uh, further down the road for my channel. We'll probably be lowering this car a little bit. I will be getting some wheels for it sooner or later uh, to kind of give it a better stance and then obviously wake the car up with a nice exhaust. So look forward to that in the future. We get to hear some beautiful Chewbacca trumpet noises and uh, just enjoy this car. So. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one.